Okay, so we are going to go ahead and take a look at a different way to do flow control. So we've kind of done, we've done a loop, right? We've done if statements. We've done if statements that combine input. Okay, now we're gonna look at a, another way to do flow control while combining input, okay? Um, and then we're gonna start to move on to different types of hardware. Okay, so what we're gonna take a look at is called a switch statement, okay? A switch statement is kind of like an if statement with some important uh, differences, all right? So I'm gonna go and create a new file. I'm gonna save that file uh, with a name that describes what's in the file. Naming is really important with files. Notice that I'm collecting quite a lot of files at this point. It, um, you should name them so that they can, you know, you can list them out and know what's in every file based upon the name. Okay, uh, so inside this task main, in this, uh, in this example, we're gonna be using two switches. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my switches. It's gonna be left switch and right switch. Okay, notice that I did motors and sensor setup. Under the motor, in port one, I'm just gonna call it wheel motor. And it's gonna be a 393 motor. Both of the sensors are gonna be digital sensors and they're gonna to be touch sensors. Okay, uh, the code is going to run inside a loop. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put the loop in now. We could put it in later, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in now. Uh, it's just going to be a, a kind of an infinite loop. Uh, so there's just a true at the top. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here is that I'm going to go ahead and, um, and declare a variable, okay? So a variable, we can think of a variable as a box, okay? Think of it as an, as an empty cardboard box, all right? And that box, in, a, in different programming languages, boxes act differently. Variables act differently in different programming languages. In some languages, you can put any kind of data inside of, of the variable, okay? The box that is the variable, okay? In other programming languages you have, that are called strongly typed, you have to declare what types of data you're gonna put inside of the variable right at the beginning. You have to declare it once and then that's the type of data you can put inside the variable, okay? C is strongly typed and therefore we have to, when we declare a variable, we have to define what type of data we're gonna put in that variable right at the get-go, okay? So how we do that is we use a keyword. So in the case of this, we're gonna, we're gonna declare a variable that can only hold integers, okay? And my variable name is gonna be go, all right? So right here, this is me declaring a variable, okay? So it says int go. All right, so int go right there, all right? Um, a lot of times you'll see people, when they declare a variable, they'll actually define, they'll actually um, do two things at one time. They'll declare the variable and initialize it. So basically that means to give it an initial value, right? So they'll do int go and then equals zero. Okay, in our case, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna declare the int go. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add the skeleton for our switch statement. Okay, so it's under control structure still. We're gonna carry over the switch here. Okay, and you guys can kind of see the switch statement at this point, all right? Okay, so let's take a look at what the switch statement looks like, all right? We have, we have our while loop right here, right? That's the body of our while loop. That's the code block that is our while loop. And then for our switch statement, notice that the switch statement is then, there's a, there's a, code, there's a code block for our switch statement right here. Inside the switch statement, there are cases. There are cases. Okay, so we have case here, and then the final one is default. I would say that case is kind of like if, and default is kind of like else. So basically, if you include the default with the body below, okay, then the, um, then the, uh, if none of the cases are satisfied, the default will execute, okay? In our case, we're not gonna use a default this time, okay, so we're just gonna remove it. All right, so basically this is what we're gonna have, okay? We have a switch, the condition for the switch is just a variable name, 
Okay, in this case, the name of the variable is going to be go. Okay, so you feed it a variable name. In C, switch statements only work on integers. Okay, so in other statements, in other, in other languages, that's not true. You can use like strings or other types of variables. In C, it's only integers, all right? And I could be wrong. Stick to integers. There might be another variable type. Stick to integers, okay? For now, unless you know for sure that, it's, it's, that I'm wrong. Okay, so switch statement, we're going to put a variable name. That's what it's going to be examined, okay? And then the case here is that, okay, if go, if the variable we're feeding in, if go is equal to zero, then we're going to execute this code right here, okay? And then we can, we can add another case, okay? So we can say, okay, in the case that, um, in the case that go is equal to one, do this code. In the case that go is equal to two, do this code, okay? What this creates, what this case statement does is it creates very clean code. It's very easy to see what's going on here. There aren't a lot of extraneous like marks and stuff that are there when you do a, an if statement. And it just creates this kind of easier to understand thing. Also, you can do a lot of odd flow things in C. And that, that's a case where you, say you had a case where you wanted, if it's a case zero, you also want to run the code in case one, you can remove these breaks. Don't do that for now, okay? This creates a very like complex structure where basically if it hits code zero, if the, if the case zero, it would, it would execute the code in case zero and case one until it hits a break statement, okay? So for now, leave the break in, okay? All right, so this is what it should look like when you, like kind of the skeleton of the code that we're gonna use, all right? Now, the question is, we've got a couple questions. First of all, what code are we gonna run? Okay, so for our example, all we're gonna run is this start motor code that we're so very familiar with at this point, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna reverse a motor, start a motor, reverse a motor, or stop a motor, like we've done in the past, okay? So we're gonna start motor, and it's gonna be wheel motor, Okay, and we're gonna start at 127. Okay, uh, in the next case, we're gonna do the uh, wheel motor negative 127, and then finally, we're gonna stop the motor um, for case, sorry, I put case one, it should be case two. Okay, so we have our case where go is one, or sorry, case where go is zero, we're gonna start the motor forward. The case where uh, go is uh, one, we're going to start the motor in full reverse, okay? In case of motor two, we're going to stop the motor. Okay, now, the question is, how do we know what go is, right? So how do we get that value? Well, in this case, that's what's controlling the flow, right? So the variable go, whatever we store in there is controlling the flow of this, of this execution, right? So every time we... Um, I, I made a mistake that I'm going to correct right now, but so every time it goes through, go needs to have a value that's going to control that. All right. Now, if you'll look where you, um, where you define these variables is very, very, very important. Okay. You could define it outside of task main. You could do that. Okay. We're not going to do that though. Okay. So for go, we actually want to define it above the while loop. Okay. Otherwise, we could define it inside the while loop, but basically we'd be over, we'd def be defining it over and over and over again, okay? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna define it just above the while loop for int go. And then inside the while loop, we're just gonna set go each time. Go is gonna be equal to, and then we're gonna collect the sensor value from our two switches, okay? So sensor value, and then we're gonna add another sensor value to it, okay? So since go is an integer, we can add our two sensor values. They're going to be zero or one, right? Okay, so we can do right switch and left switch. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, uh, let me decrease the font here size. Okay, so that is our that is our switch statement. Okay, so let's just kind of go over how it's going to go again. Okay, so. So once this is compiled and put onto the cortex, it's gonna find task main, right? It's gonna to start to execute. It's gonna execute line eight first. It's gonna it's gonna declare go as a variable that can hold integers, okay? So it's a box, just like in math, right? You got a variable, it can hold some value. It's equal to some value. 
unlike in math, a variable is like a mystery value, right? Like that you're trying to solve for or find. In computing, a variable is a, is a container, right? It's a box that you put data into, okay? In our case, that box can only hold integers and its name is Go, okay? All right, then we do while true, so then it's gonna loop line, the, the, the while uh, block is from 12 to 23, it's just gonna keep looping, right? Every time it goes to line 12, so it goes, oh, it's true, so it's gonna keep looping. And then on go, basically we add the value of right switch to the value of left switch. It's either gonna be zero, one, or two, right? Okay, and then we do our switch statement. We say, hey, switch statement, look at the value of go to, to decide, okay? The switch, every time it goes through, it, look, it gets the value of go, goes, okay, go this time is zero. So we're gonna execute line 16 and line 17 because that's the case that's zero, okay? Oh, this, and then it goes back around. Oh, this time it's, it's a two, go is a value of two. Okay, well, we're gonna skip case zero, we're gonna skip case one, we're gonna get to case two. We're gonna execute lines 22 and 23, okay? All right, does that make sense, guys? Okay, uh, so best of luck on your case statement.